Well, what's the crack, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Bookshot for Friday the 31st. Is it 34? Jesus Christ, lads, July is upon us. If you're a patron, of course, as always, you could have gotten this last night without the ads and the video, as you get for all of them. Thank you all very much for the lovely messages about last week with Craig Doyle. I'm sending them on to Craig. He's loving it. Or a fellow who thought that nobody loved him in Ireland. They absolutely love him. So, delighted. Thank you all very, very much. Clattered is rolling on. If you're brand new, going, what the fuck is he talking about, Clattered? It's my stand-up show. I'm a stand-up. Yeah. I'm a stand-up. Aside from having a long-running podcast, my show Clattered, which has been in loads of places so far, is rolling on. Next month, I'm going to be in North Kerry, Bally Longford, to be exact, in Kennelly's Bar. I'm coming back to Tipperary. I'm going to be in Care in September. I'm going to be in Kildare in September. Most likely going to be down in Kinsale Direction in August, I'd say. And I'm going to be in Galway, for sure. All those are locked in, for sure. I'm going to be in Galway for the Galway Comedy Festival. Some very exciting stuff happening with that. Got a very fun phone call about that. Stay tuned. And look at if you're a patron, I'll be talking all about that during the week. That's really where the scandal happens on the Ramble Pot during the week. So for nothing else... Go down to the show notes right now. Have a click in. And sure, for $3 a month, you get all the scandal and the loosey-goosey stuff that nobody else gets to hear. And kind of updates on madness and lunatic crap that I'd be getting up to. And basically just me venting to the world and answering questions if people need them answered. On the Ramble Pod, which is Patreon only. There you go. You get support. We're going to have a live show. Hopefully I'll get it done a bit uh, corporate thing has come in on sunday so if i'm done i i will get home but we will we'll, we're having we do live shows we do live shows where it's just purely the patrons no recording no nothing and uh, we can get loose um if it's your first time listening going what the fuck is good have a gander there's rakes other episodes 230 odd and you'll get a taste of the first hundred ramble pods whatever before they migrated completely over to patreon have a gander off them ones there's a rake of love lovely lovely stuff there the tom and jerry show many have been messaging about that we have plans in place we'll start recording towards the middle end of the summer because just gigs work stuff has it tied up but we're, I've already started my homework so he started his homework and if you listen to the last episode or the last season you'll know we're go- and we're going back into deep dives again so we've we've the whole we've I think we're going to do 10 or 12 episodes deep dives on subjects that are off the wall but we'll have the crack regardless so if you're wondering what the Tom and Jerry show is, Jerry with a G, go have a look for that. There's like seven seasons of it. Go listen to the last one first and then go back and listen to the others. It We change tack altogether. Or listen to it chronologically, whatever you want to do. If you are listening on Spotify, would you give it the five stars? Nothing else. Anything else than that? No good to me. If Right now, if you Spotify right now, just let it stay playing and just back out and go, five stars, there you go. Anything less than that, waste of time waste of time it's of no use to me I can't see who did it there's no comments with it if you do want to write a comment maybe a screen grab or do it on Apple Podcasts I don't really get to see that too often but screen grab it tag me or tag the podcast on whatever platform you like you'll find it regardless and other than that maybe hit the bell on Spotify so it pops in it's honest to god at this stage it's nearly 80% of Spotify that people are listening on so I can't be talking to them all you know you're not yourself anyway that's all the scandal and news I have for you. There's rakes more pop up on the Ramble Pod. And if you need to know anything or you want to make a comment and stuff, I, you know, I love that. I will reply. I will get around to you. I do reply to everybody in some shape, make, or whatever. Hit me up. Hit me up on whatever platform you're listening to. On. Or like to catch me on. I'm, I'm on everything. Christ almighty. I'm on Tok Tok these days. Moving on to today's guest. Today. <laughs> today's guest. I mean... He he needs next to no introduction. We had a powerful time. He's one of the founding early doors members of the Hardy Books and probably one of the most memorable soundbite people you've ever come across. <laughs> That's that some crack with Michael Sam. Great. Thanks a thanks a million for coming on. You'd seem a brilliantly enthusiastic. It was like, yeah. Like a fella who, do you know what I mean? Like, I'm the same when people ask me to do podcasts and stuff. I'm like, yeah, of course, because... Yeah, yeah. I'm just happy to talk to someone. <laughs> <laughs> well, welcome. Welcome to Buckshot. Fair play <laughs> to you. Did, yeah. 
<laughs> that's kind of been a team with some of my guests of late. They're like, Tom, listen, I'll be honest with you. I don't even give a shit what we're going to say or whatever. Just what? <laughs> uh, I don't know. All my friends don't seem to answer their phones or anything like that. So it's just the odd voice message over and that over and back. Yeah. But isn't that funny when you think about it? Almost nobody is ringing each other. I, I genuinely, I looked, I looked on my phone this morning. It was only somebody was saying it to me about they hate taking phone calls. And whatever way I looked, what the last phone call I had was like six days ago. But I've had countless, you know, interactions with people, but nobody, nobody speaks to each other anymore. I know that. I, I uh, recently cancelled my Sky subscription, and that's the most phone calls and uh, and uh, things that I have had was with Sky trying to convince me to stay with them. I can o- I can only imagine what what was that dose like because they do not want to let you go. Like I had less conversation with my uh, last breakup, <laughs> <laughs> less, of a, less of a chat than with Sky. What? It was like, it was like, do you think we should finish this? Yeah, it's been a bit stale. Yeah, all right. Will we? Yeah, okay. Sky was like, oh, please. Uh, if I do this for you, <laughs> if I go <laughs> over backwards, and if you do this, uh, for sure, we can. I go, no, no, it's just, I, I want to end it. Please, just a quick, easy break. Does it get to a point like you're, you're embarrassing yourself, Sky? You're embarrassing yourself. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> He's back now. <laughs> Making a show of yourself. Jesus Christ. Do, do I have to ring your mother? Really? Do I have to ring your mother to get this? Yeah. Yeah. And he, what what was the reason for getting rid of this guy? You just like I need to back away from society a bit more, or, or is guy just no, shy? Because I don't I don't have Sky. I just it's mostly Netflix. It was it was a kind of a consequence of kind of lockdown and stuff. I, I just got a load of subscriptions and went all out and got everything and at the time it was fairly good value and then after uh, a year or so and and after a while the the add-ons come come in so you're just i was paying like uh over 100 euro for the subscription and every month so i thought yeah this keep can't keep going on so not only is she, uh, you know, it's gone a bit stale, like the relationship, she's actually really expensive as well. Like, so this, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> this high maintenance wagon, like, Jesus Christ. And what are you getting from the relationship? Nothing. Like, nothing. <laughs> yeah, I was, I was barely watching any of it. Like, that's that's have, the thing, like. I have a, a terabyte of memory on the Skybox and I have loads of recordings and haven't watched any of them. No. I swear to God, I had to blow the dust off Amazon Prime the other night. I was like, do we still have, am I still getting charged a tenner for this shit? Because I have not, we went over and watched something. I was like, oh yeah, this one show every six months is definitely not worth the tenner I'm paying for this even. like. Yeah, I know. That's the only subscription I've kept is the Amazon Prime because I, uh, I got a big uh, TV and it had that fire uh, TV included in it. Oh yeah! So if you if you sign up to to Amazon Prime, it's like works through the TV. So I still have that, but that that's the only subscription I've kept. I got rid of everything else because it was just even I had I even got a PlayStation Four to start it kind of two years ago, and if uh, I haven't gone near it for the two years now. <laughs> Jesus Christ! Other people. I, 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 I just, I was in, my, I, I was on my own at the time, had my own little flat, and I just thought I'll, I'll uh, get it rigged out for everything, and then didn't end up using any of it. Is it that that's I always think about like apocalypse preppers. Do you know what I mean? They get all, they get like a bunker, they get fucking three years of canned foods, and you know they get like another five years of water they've generators the whole lot and like they end up just pulling in at a lay-by and eating fucking biscuits <laughs> you know what I mean? yeah. Would... yeah is there because you like you got on it straight and fairly fairly fast like with getting in all the subscriptions you're the first person i've heard who was actually thought now in fairness to your own admission you used fucking none of it but <laughs> but at the same time you got on it like you were 
you like were you ready for the coziness of lockdown or you know were you yeah just- I, was, I was to be honest uh tom because i had just kind of uh kind of recently broke up with my long-term girlfriend at the time right. and I, I had kind of moved into my own place after uh, kind of living with her for a while so i was just i was kind of ready and and the first kind of uh i didn't have any of my own tv or anything like that so i just kind of got all this stuff when i moved in and then the kind of lockdown hit so i was just like okay if, if the if this happens again later on i'll, I'll be prepared at least anyways and the thing was I, I was working in a nursing home so i had i had no kind of leave or anything like that i was still flat out at work so i had no, <laughs> I had no to, to, to bunker down apart from like i was working nights so like it'd be uh, kind of at the any day I'd have off, I'd just sit at home and watch a bit of TV and that. But once I then, uh, luckily, I kind of uh, met my now wife as well, just before lockdown, and I was kind of getting to know her through through lockdown and stuff like that. And then last year we we got married and stuff. So at least it was it was nice that way. I was, uh, but I, I had no time for Sky or. <laughs> <laughs> you just pretty much wrapped up the entire fucking podcast seven in like fucking two minutes i've got <laughs> so this is what i did over the last two years broke up got my own place found a new wife so you know what are we going to talk about tom like <laughs> i just thought i'd give you a quick synopsis i like what- it what this is this is the four this is the foreword to the book this is the the book of contents this is the page of contents basically so we'll be touching on some of those subjects oh, holy <laughs> sh- where, where did you meet your wife so you you were able to break up with some somebody kind of prepare for your own your own little cozy nest and then you met a woman who i'm no rocket surgeon but chronologically you got married fairly quick like yes right. yeah i so it basically, uh, my other partner, she was from uh, South Africa, and and she was uh, uh, went home for Christmas in two thousand and nineteen. Right. Which I had I had a feeling like way before that, but uh, also like when she came back, we kind of sat down and said, "This isn't really working," and and it had been like coming for a year or so. Um, so it was that kind of uh, thing, and uh, then I was just um, chatting to a few people online and stuff like that. So uh, I met uh, this girl, and we decided at the time we were doing the three bucks left as well. So yes, yeah, I, yeah. Uh, it was uh, in February 2020, we were doing a gig up in Belfast, so I decided to invite her. And we, this was the first time we met, and I went up. Abroad. She, she saw you at a three box left gig. Yeah, <laughs> that was the first time. <laughs> this, this is, and, uh, we were traveling up to uh, to Belfast, and this was the uh, the breaking news was COVID nineteen had come to Belfast. The first case in all of Ireland, I think it was, and so we went up there and. Uh, Gig was good. There, there wasn't that much at it, but right. uh, it was just good fun. Went well, and uh, then after that we met up maybe one more time. I was up in Dublin, and she was living up there at the time. And then after that, kind of lockdown hit. So it was the first lockdown as well. So there was no movement or nothing. Yeah. So just kind of constant over the phone, getting to know each other a bit better and chatting that way. So then the next time uh, she came down, which was like uh, August, no, it must be in September, October time. She came down to Swinford for a while. And uh, I thought, I'm not letting you get away. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not trying to let you. I'm <laughs> 
<laughs> it was it was actually, <laughs> what a Romeo. I'm not letting you get away. I think I think Tom now I'm thinking about because it was around it was around Christmas time, I think, uh 2020. So I was like, uh we were I was on about I go um I got our jewelry for Christmas and I go, oh I got you some jewelry for Christmas, but I wish I got you a ring. Something along them lines. And uh, so then uh, we uh, we decided to, we got married last year in August, which was, was good fun planning. It's something to, to get through lockdown. <laughs> <laughs> Here, listen, do you want to just eat up the time? Because we're at, oh, it's there's nothing happening. So you want to plan a wedding and we just get married and have a party, <laughs> yeah, yeah. basically. Uh, it's, it's just that thing of when you know, you know, it's that you can't really uh, put a finger on it or anything like that. It's just. Had she any any salmon pre preconceptions? Like, did she know who you were? Or... Not absolutely no idea. That was the. Oh, the only uh, good thing about both of my long-term relationships were they had no idea about Hardy Books or who I was. Uh, so, but then she kind of got a um, a rude awakening when we uh, when we went up to the gig and and that, <laughs> and I was like uh, trying to explain what what nerd was going on. Uh, well, where is she from? She's from Mexico. She... <laughs> okay, okay, brilliant, brilliant. To like from Sweden. <laughs> well, can you imagine coming from Mexico, landed, <laughs> landed into Swinford, and the king of Swinford meets her at the gates? Basically, says, "I'll show you. All. I'm ruler over all I survey." <laughs> uh, yeah, does it? It's only been kind of uh, this year and uh, the last while when we've been able to go back out to to the pubs and different things that yeah. um, I've got a lot of people coming up to me and uh, about the Hardy box and take pictures and stuff like that. So, but at this stage, she knew about that anyways. But I got I got to go over to Mexico in, in last October, so that was great. Brilliant. Where did you yeah. go in Mexico? Where, where, where is she originally from? Uh, she's from Puebla. It's, oh, yes. It's yeah, a, yeah. Uh, kind of city just outside uh, of Mexico City. It's not too far away from Mexico City. And uh, she's from a kind of small town just outside that city. So it was really, really nice. Just I was uh, staying with her family and stuff like that. So. That was great. Oh, what was the crack landed on to Mexico? How are you, man? How are you, dad? How was what's the crack? <laughs> <laughs> like, it, it was were they, great. Were they cool with the notion that she was landed on with a brand new husband? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we, what it was, we got married here in August and I went over there in October and we had another kind of church wedding over in Mexico for right, her family right, yes. and all that. So, that was kind of, so uh that's the more i think official wedding was kind of out in mexico uh but um yeah it was great now i have to say even though i only had a few words of spanish so and they had no real english at all so it was like all <laughs> translation around. uh oh the, like i absolutely love the notion of that that it's like for the one for a better phrase, fish out of water. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I did use that phrase myself. <laughs> did you? <laughs> yeah. But not that I like you know, not that any man shouldn't shouldn't be allowed to go anywhere or experience anything, but the brilliance of the juxtaposition between like you know, Mayo and a fell like a fella's wild as you know, from the wildness of of the Hardy books lands in Mexico, like two worlds collide. It's absolutely beautiful. Like the notion of it, like, <laughs> like yes. landed on in the green and red 
Oh, dear God. Well, <laughs> well. <laughs> uh, so, and you're, I, has she, have you convinced her to move to Swinford with you? Uh, yeah, I think we're going to uh, stay in Ireland for, for a few years now anyway, because like my parents still live here and uh, a few friends and stuff like that. So at the moment we're, we're nice set, nice set up at the moment. So still nothing wrong with Mexico either. You know what I mean? Oh no, no, I can, I can see myself maybe in uh, a few years time, like five or 10 years to move over. Like if we get, we have to kind of set up, maybe get a, house or somewhere we can't be sleeping on the couch again <laughs> El Simon. El Simon. <laughs> uh, yeah oh that'd be fantastic like i i love i absolutely love that and it, it, even in in hardy ironically and possibly coincidentally in the hardy box they had you getting married to uh, was it a russian one it was a russian one wasn't it yeah yeah <laughs> Like, we well, get around to how it all started, but like, when they were just like, like, had you input into script or were you just happy enough? Because you looked like a fellow who was just happy enough to roll with it, like, because you're <laughs> embracing the, the, because you were the straight man out of everybody, really. Like. Yeah, yeah. Basically, yeah. Um, they kind of would come up with the idea and write out a bit, but uh, we'd all kind of sit down together. Um, and kind of go go through the stuff and give our own ideas or that. Um, but most of it, most of it was yeah, wrote down and and uh, I was kind of told what was going to happen. I go yeah, not too bad. All right, we'll see how how we get on with that. Because you were able to keep it dead deadpan too. Like in all fairness to you, no matter the bizarre, the most bizarre scenes they would put you in, like floating down a river or whatever. Like and you're just going, how's he keeping it so deadpan, like so straight? Because <laughs> all the rest of them, there was a tongue and cheek element to it. You know, they were playing such an outer body ca- character, but you were just, <laughs> you were just able to keep it just flat on the surface, like like coming out with outlandish scenarios. Yeah, that, I think that's uh, they they kind of got a, a kick out of that. Uh, it was basically just kind of me being me. So oh, uh, great! Right. I wasn't I wasn't the most outlandish or the most uh, energetic or uh, exuberant one. Of the guys that so they kind of uh, used that so that it's, they kind of just said, "Yeah, just just be yourself," kind of be straight and and uh that way and then they put me into kind of funny situations and get get a laugh out of it but didn't that work perfectly then because obviously you were giving it so straight and so flat that any yeah, like, think... any lines off the back of that would sound i ama- mean like i remember there was one saying that you were going to you're going to rule this town with an iron fist and it sticks in my head and it still pops up on things like tiktok and stuff like that just and you're giving it so flat and so straight it was like there's no, there's no silliness to this, which is what makes it even better, do you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, the, some of them, like that line, was just uh, came up off the cuff as we were doing it. Um, Brilliant. But most of them were kind of, uh, well, the, the scenes were taught out and then you could kind of come up off the cuff and we'd shoot quite a lot of uh, takes so you could... Uh, improvise a bit or, or do do your own thing to uh, add something to it or take something out or that but most of the time yeah um, it's funny because I'm not one of the uh, uh, you could nearly call me a bit of a background character I'm not in all the scenes or I'm not in kind of the most memorable or the most uh, iconic ones but I seem to have a lot of like phrases or scenes that are remember memorable which i kind of like because it is it, it's... Oh, that's that isn't that it happens in all sitcoms of any sort it'll be the one character that they weren't expecting to have longevity in especially i suppose with social media you know and all the rest of it, because it's just like a 20 second clip there's not 
there's nothing more powerful right now than a 15, 20, a 15 second clip. Do you know what I mean? And yeah. that's yeah, that's exactly. typically what Salmon, it's all he needed was 15 seconds. Like, so a long three minute conversation may not translate to today's social market, but a fella standing there going, like, yeah, I'm going to rise to the top in six months and rule this down like an iron, with an iron fist without breaking a smile. Perfect. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. Because I've, I've even seen on TikTok, they can rip, they allow you to rip um, the audio and lay it over your own video. And I've seen, okay. like, I didn't realize this because it was, it was only I saw Mickey Bartlett, loads of people were using it, I think, that Mickey Bartlett did, comedian from the North. And then I saw your one, and it's just some kid driving a tractor lawnmower. And he's just, <laughs> he's just looking at the camera, just staring straight at the camera, and it's your voice going. <laughs> yeah. And this kid is probably too, not just too young, he probably wasn't fucking born when that kid. And that phrase was put out, but he loved it. He was using, he was able to find it and use it for his own thing. All right, okay, I'll, I'll have to look out for them or something. But uh, yeah, it was, it was just what was great because we were all kind of friends and grew up together, so we all kind of worked very well together and kind of knew our strengths and weaknesses. So yeah, yeah, we were yeah. able to work uh, really easily together. So a lot of the time, it was kind of after the camera had stopped, we'd all be pissing ourselves laughing and leading up. We'd always try to kind of warm each other up as well. Yeah. So we'd yeah, be yeah. sitting around waiting, but we'd be chatting to each other and trying to make each other laugh and stuff like that. So um, that way it was, it was great fun, like to, to be involved with. And how, so obviously being friends with the lads and it was, I mean, it was Martin and um, Chris, I assume that were kind of the, the original drivers of it. Yeah. Then, what was the approach to you? Like, what were you doing at the time that the lads just approached you? Um, at the time, I I wasn't doing a lot. I was. Uh, <laughs> That's a great phrase. I, 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 I was a government mule, you know. I was. I on understand. The, I understand. The back. <laughs> uh, so what it was, I was at. Um, Another friend from Swinford, we were at, I was at his birthday party or something like that. And Martin came up to me in the pub and said, we're going to be doing this uh, video. Uh, would, would you mind being in it? So, no problem. So this was like uh, ages later, I get a phone call and said, oh, we're ready to do that thing now. So it was just a once off, one uh, kind of, it was like nearly like the pilot, right? But it was they did like um, maybe a forty minute or fifty minute uh, episode, a, a quite a long one, and uh, then maybe nearly a year later uh, they said, "Okay, we got um, this kind of commission for this storyland." So it was like uh, we were nearly every weekend doing a short video putting it up online uh, but we'd spend the whole weekend uh, recording the episodes and it was only a short uh, clip that would go up on the uh, storyline but we were allowed to put longer episodes on YouTube and we built up a fan base that way yes. uh, and ended up winning storyline and got a, 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 a series so that was the first series on RTE and then uh, got a few uh, the other series and, and Christmas specials and that so it was more it was more planned than after that and, uh, but could you have ever imagined it was going to hit like it hit like Jesus no no I like we we were thinking it's just we're making ourselves laugh we're we're enjoying doing this for ourselves we never thought like it is uh, even we just thought that it'd be fairly in the west of Ireland or yeah 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 kind of not even travel past the Shannon like but <laughs> we were just happy like uh, and and then you don't you don't know how kind of popular or good it is until you kind of really talk to people and go out other places and find that people are quote, shouting at you in the street and shouting quotes and stuff like that. I suppose, you see, I, what I, the takeaway I had from it, that it was, 
it was representative kind of a lot of it was one of the few kind of country based like it was rural based it was mm. probably one of the, you know one of the few rural based comedies that I suppose young people it was the only you were representing young country people who weren't living in major cities and were kicking you know scratching their arse half the time kind of going maybe we yeah. should maybe we shouldn't maybe we should you know and I had mates who all shagged off to Australia or whatever you were the last lads left around like you know what did the people of Swinford actually make of it? Because the outlads and stuff like that, like, were they kind of, <laughs> like, did they warm to you? Uh, oh, yeah, they did. Um, uh, at first, I imagine the, uh, they were like, what's going on here? And the curiosity and stuff like that. And then after, like, uh, 10, 15 minutes of not a lot happening and then kind of getting told to move on, they thought, ah, it's a load of shit. <laughs> yeah, that's that's that. the reality but, of it. Like. Yeah, but then once like uh, it kind of went to RT and the series was, uh, okay, it's summertime uh, for three or four months, you're recording in the town and all around the different places. Uh, they kind of got uh, more used to it and, and were happy. Uh, the whole town really got into it, really, because they were allowing us to use anywhere in the town, really, all the pubs or the shops or anything like that. If you where, needed. Would, where would you get that? Like that you can, because that was the, I mean, that was the selling factor of the thing that it sold it so well. Like, like other, other, I suppose, for all, for the want of a better phrase, mockumentary style, you know, they were contained in one area, you know, mm. anything from like the Trail of Heart Boys or whatever. They were, you knew they had to be contained in one area because they wouldn't. They didn't have the funding to use anything beyond where they were. But you literally got to use a whole town and anything you wanted in it. So where would you yeah, get it? Exactly. Actually, we were, we were able to use a few towns. So there was like, uh, we were in Castlebar and Swinford and Charlestown and that. So like, yeah, it was, it was great actually uh, to be able to uh, just have that freedom of uh, people saying, okay, yeah can uh, use this pub for the whole day set up a wedding in it (laughs) no problem no problem Uh, yeah it was it was amazing really it was really good um, atmosphere in the town at the time as well like of course it I mean it I suppose it's almost like what what the quiet man did for Kong down you know in that it it uh I for it would introduce it to people who never actually heard of Swinford or no, you know, people go, oh yeah, right, this is, you know, this is this is the actual place. So I'll never forget, uh, I we were we were on our honeymoon, we honeymooned in Mayo, because mm-hmm. that particular year, I'd been on even by April, I'd been on nine different flights. I was like, I can't with gigs and stuff. I, I can't fly abroad. I can't just the sight of another pack of overweight English people in front of me in the queue and flip flops. I just can't deal with it. Like, and, uh, herself was delighted because she was, she'd been abroad to plenty of places as, as a child. And she was like, I, I would sooner or less, well, let's go out West. So we, it was in Mayo. And I remember Owen, Owen Colgan text me going, well, did you want to be, do you want to be in this series? I said, God, that'd be lovely. But I'm kind of getting, you know, on my honeymoon, he went, I'll oh, say no more, say no more. And, we were driving through Swinford and lo and behold, you were set up on the street. And I say, in fairness to herself, she was, she, how I knew if it reiterated a good wife that she is or marrying the right woman, she literally went, look it, if you want, <laughs> we can, you can do it. I went, no, no, I don't. Yes. I'd love to do it with the lads. No, no, we're on our honeymoon. This is, <laughs> But still, one of the, one of my favorite counties in the entire place because there's a I find a kinship with kind of Mayo people. I don't I find myself always having some reason to go to Mayo. I don't know why, what it is like. It's and and, and oddly anywhere else I'm in the country, especially Dublin, I think because of different places I've lived around Ireland, the world of people ask me, "Are you from Mayo?" I don't know why. I think it's <laughs> it's I'm a tip accent, but I I pronounce my ths. Which you do in Mayo. So I think maybe his country, and he pronounces TH, he must be from Mayo. So if that's the case. <laughs> but, but like it, the draw, like you still live there, like the amount of lads who just, you know, want to bail or 
turned their back on their their hometown or whatever like you still love the place oh yeah 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 it's uh, yeah actually this this year as well i've been traveling around parts of mayo i haven't been to like uh down patrick head and stuff yes. like that and, uh, it's it is like you don't appreciate your own back door like until you realize you get a bit older and you realize oh yeah there's it's a, a great spot it, it yeah i i i could always easily find an excuse did they i think the, i was trying to take rack my brain i think the only time we ever actually met was we were do, we did a gig together in dublin at the haven bridge inn do you remember that yes i was uh i was actually chatting to Owen about that oh yeah um, yeah 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 because uh to be honest tom you're very different today if i met you today i wouldn't have <laughs> yeah, yeah. that time i was saying it to Owen, and he was like yeah he had that kind of character of the a bit more of a kind of wild man uh kind of attitude of uh, uh, yeah and, and they they were a great kind of escape for me because it was just Owen would say oh do you want to do this uh on this night and i'd just go up to dublin for the weekend or whatever and and do it and then go back home but yeah that was that was um and interesting because it was the first time like you know, kind of uh doing stand up we did we did a hardy box tour but that was all of us but this was the kind of first time myself and Owen and and that we're kind of going out doing stand up so yeah because they build it as kind of culture night or whatever like you know of course yeah. like you know i mean kind of racist but you know yourself to uh <laughs> but the three of us and i'll I, 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 the power, the swinging power. It was like a Sunday night or something like that, and we were downstairs smoking fags or whatever we were doing, and we went upstairs, and it was rammed to the fucking walls. And I knew it wasn't for me. It was like, sure, I'm nobody, like or whatever. And it, it, it probably, I suppose, again, the power of the social media comedian hadn't come on the scene at that stage. It was, you know, burgeoning, I suppose, to a degree. But the swinging power of just that two of you of that were from Hardy Box just packed the place in Dublin, you know what I mean? Away from your own home place, like, you know, that kind of way. Yeah, that must have been one of the earlier ones because later on, it kind of dwindled down. <laughs> <laughs> that happens <laughs> us all. We all have a hot spot for and, a while. That happens us all. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I think about about uh, 20 of them would have been all from Swinford anyway. <laughs> 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 Because I remember uh, doing that and then uh, going back maybe uh, a month later and I was doing the exact same material and I was looking around and there was a few of the same ones in the room and I go, oh shit, I better try and write something different. <laughs> but even I remember being coming back from a gig and I was getting, I was living in Dublin at the time and I was having a couple of pints and I got the bus home and whatever, there was a woman sitting beside me and she just struck up a conversation just normal. She goes, what, are you, what were you up to this evening? I said, I was doing gigs in town. Oh, you do comedy? Yeah, yeah. And whatever way, I was with, I was, and I, I was with, or I, I was done, I'd done a podcast that day with Owen as well. I yeah. said, oh yeah, and I did a podcast with a mate of mine, he was from the Hardy Bucks. She, I swear to God, this woman nearly fell out. She was maybe in her 40s. She nearly fell off the fucking chair. She's like, oh, <laughs> no. And she showed, then produced her phone and somewhere, she got it on a night out somewhere. She got a photograph with you. She said, look. And she had this sword in her phone for like three years. She's like, look. Oh, but it was, it was this, yeah. it, it, it meant, it meant that much to her. Like, and you forget those things. It's like, oh yeah, it was just me. You know, it's just as Sam and you were just having a good time with your mates. Like, but you forget how much it means to people. Yeah. Yeah. That's, yeah. That's why I, I try not to refuse anyone a picture or, and like yeah. that because you know you'd think oh oh god not another one but then you have to think on the other side is if you had met someone you'd want to have kind of a photo with you'd that you'd try treasure that like and, but it's uh, it's amazing to me that like 
we still see ourselves as just ordinary lads from Mayo. So it's like, it's just amazing at any time anyone kind of recognizes us or wants to stop and take a picture. It is, but that's, I mean, that's a good, healthy Irish attitude to have because we all know of people who ran away with themselves with the, the smallest sniff of a, of fame or whatever. And I've seen, I've seen comics who I came up with, like turn people down for photographs. I'm like, are you fucking joking me? Are you joking me? Like, yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Get a yeah. grip. Do you know? It, and it's, it's, it's now it's, it feels like it's been long enough. I thought, oh God, people would have gotten or that certain people may not know us, but still seems to be, the Hardy books are recirculating with teenagers and younger people. It seems to be still going quite good. Like even if we don't get any more episodes or series, it seems to still like, have a fan base. Then. Like I said, it's it's one of these ones almost like Father Ted where it just crops back up again. Like it's like that kid who I guarantee you had no full concept of what, of what he was using in the way of audio. Like he can't be more than 10, this young fella. Like, so literally, yeah. I would say at best he was a year or two old when you actually said those words. But this kid, <laughs> it was, but it was absolutely hilarious knowing the two sides of the of the coin. Like, but the same thing happened with McSavage. Sure, McSavage, the Savage I was older than the Hardy Bucks, and he got a yeah. hold of all the footage. Oh, started an Instagram account and has rebooted his entire career for people who had never been around watching the, you know, wouldn't have been old enough to watch the Savage Eye back in the day. Yeah, because. Now we've social media that demands content. Sure, I mean, say no more. You have how many series, whatever, a bunch of series of the of the Hardy Bucks. Just yeah, yeah. There you go. If you put a you, you put it out and people are gonna hog it. So how did it, like at the height of it, how it sounds like you dealt with fame fairly well, like because there's no two ways about it. I know as Irish people we'd cringe at the no, notion of the word fame, but fame it was, because Jesus Christ, it was the biggest thing on telly for the for a good while. Yeah, it was, uh, we just kind of uh, all, at the time, we were all kind of still living in, in Swinford and, and surrounding areas. So to us, we just could go home to our normal lives. And we were live, still living our normal enough lives when we weren't recording the show. But then it was it was just basically through kind of live shows and being able to uh, do gigs that was um, the big plus with the eye opener of how how big it was because we went and, and did the Galway Comedy Festival and went down and, and did the Cork Opera House and stuff like that so uh, it was it was then we uh, you can kind of realise how, how popular it was and how, how big it was and now after a few years of it not being on the TV and, and it's still quite a lot of people coming up to you and wanting pictures and uh, like I've forgotten most of what I've did in the Hardy Box, but people will remind you and they'll know line for line some of this stuff yeah. and I'll be like all oh, right okay <laughs> Isn't so it, like, I might I might have to go back and watch some of it to refresh my memory just in case I ever kind of go out and do any more kind of shows or anything like that. So I mean like the fact that you can kind of let it let that go in your head where I open for her. It would have been a, a one once upon a time a very well known American comedian. And he his closer, his closer on the night. The nights that we did together, I toured with him, was the last 10 minutes, I would say seven to 10 minutes, was just getting people to shout lines from their favorite movies that he was in. And he would redo, act them out. And, oh. and it went down a fucking storm. I The first time I saw this, I went, you cheeky shit. This cannot be your closer. You've, you've done nothing for this, like. In fact, <laughs> other people have written the lines for you prior and now you're going to get the audience and you're going to just act them out for them and mother of Jesus, did they love it. They loved it. I was I was blown away. But then I, in my own head, I went, there you go. You're giving the people exactly what they want. Oh, yeah. 
the uh, tell me the, I was because I I could I do up a post beforehand, so I was looking up, I was looking you up or whatever, and Jesus did. It's always funny when you type it in. It's always there'll always be some financial director called Tom O'Mahony or Michael Salmon. There will always be yeah, yeah, yeah. somebody ahead of transport of some company somewhere, like the most boring, boring team. But when I, you go to you, like your IMDb popped up, so I went, that's that's Mike, that's him. I went in, but then it's it said you produced a movie as well, did you? Uh, no, no, that might be that might be mixed up with Mike Cocaine. Who who was the producer on, on the Hardy books? Right, there might be a, there might be a mistake there. Well, I you remember been... before? Yeah, I remember <laughs> before I used to Google my own name. And of course, there was this, this uh, American kind of, or I think he was a children's book author or something like that. And then he had the, there was this like uh, online game you could play. That was that was the first Michael Salmon that would pop up. <laughs> God, you'd hate to type it in like and find out some like horrendous murder or something was you as well. <laughs> oh shit. No, that that'll probably be me in a few years. <laughs> he was such a nice fella. I don't know why he went on. One trip to Mexico yeah, I, comes back I, with an I don't attitude. Know, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know why he was screaming, I'll rule this town with an iron fist while he was back. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I, hey, if you're if you're getting back on the road, I know exactly what your closer is going to be. Uh, it just be getting people to ask for your favorite quotes from the Hardy books for you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it, it works. I've seen it. I've seen it in action. So t- tell us more anyway about the 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 um. Oh yes, I knew because Owen texted me the other day. He says if you're talking to Mike, he has to tell you he's got a juicy story about when you shot the movie that time. Now. The zone Colgan now putting you to the pin your collar. I I hold no, I'm holding taking no responsibility for for put, but I I I am the conduit for this story that Owen has requested. Um, <laughs> you're thinking about can you tell it? <laughs> I I am and I'm uh, 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 trying to think of which which story he he's um. He's talking about, and uh, can I remember clearly enough to give it justice? <laughs> well, because, give it- like, there was basically it's a, a lad in in Amsterdam and in Poland. So, and it was during the Euros, so a lot of stuff uh, was going on. Um, I so love I, I love how you, your entire trip is like Tom. I could tell you any part of this, and it would make your hair stand on the top back of your head. So you need to be more specific. He wasn't specific on it, but he said during the shooting of the movie, like for anybody who's wondering, the boys shot a feature version of their TV show, but it was brilliant. They went to the Euros, but via Amsterdam. And if you picked up anything from what I've been talking about, of what we've been talking about, <laughs> it was like on on it. Oh, and did he bang a flashlight? Did I remember that correctly? Uh, yes, yes. He did. And his own parents went to see the screening or went to the <laughs> premiere, which is yeah. amazing. And they were like, they, I love, I remember asking him, what were they like? They were like, oh, fair play, you know, that was great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I like that story as well, where he he was, in, we were in this mo- mobile home camper van and he was in the toilet of it trying to basically get himself hard so that he'd be able to hold it on but eventually he couldn't because everyone kept banging on the door going are you ready are you ready <laughs> so he had to kind of they had to kind of tie it around him and stuff uh but yeah maybe maybe it's the time we were in amsterdam and um we used to just go for a walk out in the uh the certain district of Amsterdam. Yeah. Just a yeah. uh, bit of window shopping. <laughs> and uh, for some reason uh one of the ladies uh took a disliking to me and uh started uh 
they had water pistols for some reason and started firing this water pistol at us. At least okay. I hope it was water. I hope it was water. <laughs> I don't know what, like, I wasn't really that, that drunk or, or anything like that. Or, I don't know, were we just a bit boisterous and loud between ourselves? He definitely. Or, he definitely. What? <laughs> So that that was one instant, um, but I'd have to ask Owen to be <laughs> to clear up some of the others because some of them are a little bit more hazy. And <laughs> so, what was the, How long was that shoot? Do you know what? I'm going to text him now while we're here. I, I'm, I'm... <laughs> um, that was uh, we must have been. We were. Two, two days in Amsterdam, I think, and then a very quick uh, trip into Berlin and then in Poland. We must have been in Poland for about six or seven days. So it was at least, it was about 10, 10 to 12 days on the road. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave him a voice note because as, as, as we said earlier that we don't, we don't ring each other. Owen, <laughs> Owen, I, I have Mikey Salmon on the podcast right now, and he was basically say he's saying he was so hazy over the whole trip in Amsterdam and Poland that he can't recall. Well, there was that one where he got shot with a water pistol by a lady of the night, and he's wondering is that that the story you're on about? Something tells me if you the story you told me was your flashlight story that you're the one you're thinking about it, of Mikey is something different. Let me know. Because we'll be on for another bit. This will be good. This will be good. Yeah, he literally said he he tripped to put. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No, he he was he just le- left it at that. It was juicy stories. So, <laughs> but I mean, how do, how did the Hardy books get stuff done on a trip to Poland? Because suffered and sweet Jesus, I can only imagine the crack was was ninety like. Uh, yeah, I uh. We were. It was it was long long days and long nights, uh, but somehow we we worked well and we got we knew we had to kind of when we were filming we had to be on a point but and and do it right and stuff like that because we didn't have the luxury of doing a lot of takes or doing stuff over and over again so. We had to, for for the days we were, especially in Amsterdam, because a lot of the places you weren't allowed to have cameras and stuff like that. Oh shit! Yeah. So course. there was there was one with with Owen where he he was uh, in with uh, one of the ladies, and usually they would straight away if you had any kind of even just a phone or anything like that, they'd say no, no, you can't have that. But there somehow they were able to get in with a camera and everything like that. So, but then in, in Poland, the only thing was a lot of, uh, at the campsite, there was a lot of obviously Irish fans and a lot of Hardy Bucks fans as well. So that was, that's uh, trying to uh, get sleep while people are all partying around you. And you can hear lads going, oh, the Hardy Bucks are in there. And, like, uh, banging on the door and stuff like that. Uh, but other than that, most of the time we we were we were just kind of we had to do what we had to do. So we we kind of got it done and then enjoyed ourselves when we could. Yeah, well I, I suppose the the other side of it too is it's not like a gang of stranger actors come together, read a script and have to all pretend like they like each other. Like you were you were already in flying form as a, a group anyway, because you'd done so much work together. So you were fighting fit at that stage and you were all mates. So I suppose you knew the triggers to pull as soon as the green light goes, you're like, right, we're on. You know what I mean? I, I guess that's, that was the beauty of that one is that it wasn't strange waters to you, albeit you were in Europe. Yeah. Or whatever, like. Yeah. yeah uh, I suppose that the most, um, Kind of risky part of it was when uh, when Chris Tordoff, the Viper was was fully naked oh, in yeah. a, a low buy in, in Germany, I think it was, or in a, in 
uh, somewhere in Holland or something. So that was probably the most uh, nerve wracking shoot uh, part of it. But the rest of it w went quite smoothly. Now, if you talk to to the producer or, or the director of it, they might have other stories. <laughs> Maybe uh, the headache of it, they would never do again. But we we enjoyed it and it seemed to go pretty well and pretty smoothly for the most part. <laughs> and that's the most important thing. It's you to good <laughs> yeah, exactly. I had my fun and that's all I care about. <laughs> well, you seem like like you, you seem like a very zen kind of character. Like as a as a you know as, not a character as a person. It, you kind of so I remember talking with Owen, we got we started to get quite spiritual. Have you f turned that corner? Because I've gone turned that corner in my older age where I'm not saying I'm religious or anything, but kind of more trying to get in tune with the universe and the small bit of nature, even a bit more. Like if if needs is this do you do you find it or is just just me turning into an outlet? I don't know. No, I think I, I have the same kind of feeling now. I now I'm yeah, just I feel like I want to uh, have a home and, and a nice kind of garden or just a, a nice feeling of being kind of comfort and relax and, and uh, not kind of trying to keep up with any kind of trends or, yeah. or like anything like that. So, so um, yeah, I, I feel like, I've less kind of uh, stress that I've put on myself. Like before, I would be going out drinking or stuff like that. Now I don't do that as much, but there's more of life stresses or, or like feeling of I have to I have to do this. I have to be here. I have to yeah. I don't think this kind yeah. of thing. To, to and then you realize no, I have I'm, I have. Uh, I'm happy. I'm, I'm in a good relationship. So uh, just trying to uh, keep uh, in contact with a few friends and and, and stuff like that. And that's the important thing. The other stuff can kind of take a back seat. And yeah, I feel like I need to kind of relax into it a bit more. Uh, when I was younger, I was kind of like, ah, I'll do it when I'm older. And now I'm that age, I'm like stressing a bit more, but trying to keep it level. Jesus it. Christ, you, you got married anyway. Like you, you pulled the trigger fast than most fellas. Like they're still scratching around. They don't know how to get out the <laughs> yeah, yeah. or whatever. Like, Jesus, you got, you got the wife, the whole lot. You got the holiday home in, in Mexico. Jesus, it's all going, it's all gravy for, <laughs> for seven <laughs> right now. <laughs> <laughs> But I, I do, um, I, I know what you're talking about, the comforts, the idea, and I like that, we're, hence the reason why we moved back, moved to the countryside was well, not just the affordability of the countryside, back moving back to the yeah. area, whatever, but also, like, it's here, a man could aspire to uh, his own acre, you know what I mean? Whereas, yeah. that ain't happening, that ain't happening in Dublin, you know, where we were, any no. any built up urban area, really, like, it ain't happening, so that, it was the same thing, but it's it's definitely... The, the lack of shits. I mean, look at the head in me. I've got a mullet and a giant moustache. Like, what the Christ do I do? <laughs> like, to say that I don't follow fashion trends is an understatement, Sam, is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> How were you the only fellow on Hardy Books that was allowed to keep his actual name? All the rest of them ended up with nicknames or absolutely character-built names. I know Mikey Salmon, no better name. You couldn't. You couldn't, you couldn't, because. Um, well, it was uh, kind of my own uh, lack of imagination at the time. <laughs> so they, they, they said, do you want to be called Salmon or do you want to come up with a, a kind of name? And I, I was like, mm, mm, no, I'll, I'll keep Salmon. <laughs> well, it was, it, it was that it long was of about, a deliberation, was it? Yeah, yeah, it was about that length of deliberation as well it was like, hmm, uh, no no salmon will be fine right pint <laughs> <laughs> yeah because that's um, that's exactly how I hoped it would be 
like that you didn't go away, you know, create a storyboard around the idea of the salmon, <laughs> you know, and I'm so glad that it literally took you 2.5 seconds to go, no, salmon is fine, thanks, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. It gave me a bit of a joke on the stand-up as well because I was able to go, uh, a lot of people who would ask me, Where, where's the salmon come from? And I kind of go, well, I got it off my father and he got it off his father. <laughs> the little bit of a family tradition, you know, uh, something that, along them lines anyway. <laughs> and it, um, is, it is correctly spelled salmon with S-A-L-M-O-N. Yes. Okay, because, yeah, because the only other salmon I know is Edwin Salmon. He's a comic from, uh, from Offaly, but he's like, is it S-A-M-M, I think, O-N. I'm not sure, I think, but it's definitely not spelled like the fish correctly yeah. which always disappoints me to be honest and i've been friends with him for <laughs> years but it's like it's not the real thing is it? it's like some faux protestant salmon it's not the real <laughs> it's not the real deal so i i've taken up enough of your time i know i know we we you were saying just, just purely just just to talk to somebody and all the rest of but in all <laughs> fairness spending the year and asking you non-stop questions to, could wreck anybody's head but <laughs> The, what what can we expect next? Because in fairness, you're, I mean, we've now follow each other online and then stuff. You're not people should actually. By the way, um, I'll put I'll put your Instagram is probably one of them. it's the one everybody likes. It's the one you can put up fun pictures and all the rest of it. Like, but yeah, so yeah, you, yeah. You are like there is a kind of a, a positivity and an active vibe. I noticed that you had been going visiting the rest of Mayo. What is what's the plans? Have you any plans for salmon that people could get to meet salmon come any more down the line? I think there needs to be a, a day of the salmon or something. <laughs> Maybe there's a salmon fest in the cards. Uh, hopefully, if it comes back to Ban now, I might make a ask around to see if I can get a, a bit of, of that action. But at the moment, I'm trying to, I've, I've kind of stepped away a bit. We were doing with uh, Stephen Kelly and Peter Casty, we were doing yes. three books left. Uh, but now they have kind of uh, gone on and, and they're doing live shows and stuff like that. And I, at the time I was working and you couldn't commit any kind of time to that. So of course, I, yeah, of, yeah. I, I told them to uh, belt ahead without me. So any if they ever needed me for any podcast or they have like dead hedgehogs and, and three books left. Uh, so I, I'd happily jump on with them again if, if they wanted, if I had time to kind of do stuff with them. Or anytime Owen is back here in Mayo now, so anytime I, I get a chance to hang out with him or that, um, uh, I would do that. So maybe just like yourself, a few podcasts if anyone wanted me on. Um, anything like that I'd be happy to do but at the moment I'm uh, stepping back and waiting to see what happens I love it Salmon I, I, I want to call you Michael Salmon but I actually just really want to just call you Salmon Salmon this has been an absolute joy <laughs> that's no problem Sam. thanks a million dude so if you go down to the show notes you'll find his Instagram handle go ahead follow Michael Salmon Thank you very, very much, Michael. Fair play to you. Yeah, I think he's a man we got to hang out to. we got to hang out with myself and Colgan and himself. Next time I pop over with the... Actually, next month I'm going over to... Yes, a very exciting episode of Those Conspiracy Guys. So I'll swing into the salmon and see what it's all about. Like I said, Clatter is going everywhere. So if you want to follow the link in the bio or just listen. Listen in. I will tell you, don't worry, I'll be shouting it from the rooftops. If you don't follow me on Instagram, Instagram's the handiest place to follow me when I just talk about gigs and stuff coming up. Tom Mahoney Comedy or Bookshop Podcast. You know yourself. You'll find me anywhere. If you probably found me through that route. Failing that, do you know what? Just just, just say, just shout. I'll probably show up. I'm that handy. I'll probably show up. Do subscribe if you are listening on whatever platform you're listening to. And you, this is just a free, you're free basin right now. Turn around, hit subscribe. If there's a notification bell, i.e. like Spotify go ahead hit that if you want to become a Patreon share the love support the show and get loads of extra content that nobody else gets i.e. F- just ads I think most people just come on because they want to support the show but ads give them a pain in the hole 
Go on away over. Three dollars here a month. The link is below in the show notes. Right, boys and girls, go on away. Enjoy the rest of the weekend. I'll talk to you again next week. Good night, good and thanks.